Income Tax 2021-2022 Tax Software Interest Income. Get ready to get refunds to the max. Diving into Income Tax 2021-2022. Here we are in our Lacert Tax software. You don't need access to the Lacert Tax software or any software to follow along, but you might want to have the Form 1040, which you can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov, the tax software, making it much easier for us to run different scenarios as we do different data input and jump on over to the end result, that being the Form 1040. So we've got our scenario here, that being the single filer, Adam Smith, and he's living in Beverly Hills 90210. And we have the starting point of the 100,000 for the wages that we're going to start out at. The standard deduction we're going to say is the 12,550. If we mirror that in our tax worksheet, we got the 100,000. We got the standard deduction, which we're going to say is the 12,550. That means the taxable income 87,450, 87,450 here. And then if we calculate the tax, we're at the 1515. If we bring that on over and say there's the 1515, that's our starting point. So now we've got the interest income we're going to be considering, adding that on. Now, oftentimes the interest income is going to be fairly small, uh, you know, in relation to other income sources, unless there's a lot of money that's going to be invested uh, in interest. And you're usually going to get it straight from the financial institution. So you'll have the information necessary to do the data input. So let's say we've got the 1099. It's going to look something like this. Now, this is a 1099. Remember, like the full 1099. If you get it from a financial institution, they might only give you kind of like the boxes that are relevant. So it might look a little bit different, but it'll typically say 1099 INT uh, for it and give you the relevant boxes often being the box number one if it's normal kind of interest possibly then box number eight or some of the more common kind of things that you're going to see now if it's under the like one thousand five hundred dollars then it'll just be reported basically on the first page of the 1040 so let's check that out going back on over and let's say we go to income and let's say we had some interest income let's say this was from bank number one bank number one and we had interest income let's say it was for $300, $300 back on over. And so there's the $300 that's going to be on B2. Notice no new form has been filled out here for Schedule B because we don't need Schedule B because the IRS is saying, hey, that's a little bit of interest. We're not too concerned with it. So whatever. And so and so we're not going to add another schedule there. Now, when I go over to my tax worksheet, I'm not going to do the same thing in that I'm not going to say like expand my income line item on the summary page. I am going to use the separate schedule, which is Schedule B, even though it's not being populated on the tax return, because I want my front page, my summary page to be as basically summarized as possible. So I'm going to go to Schedule B and say there's the 300. That's going to pull back on over to the first page. Now I'm at the 100,300, the standard deduction at the 12,550, bring in the tax taxable income down to the 87,750. So if I go back to the first page here, we're at the 87,750 tax now calculated based on that slightly increase 1587, 1587, pulling that back over on 5087. So there's going to be this, the standard scenario. Now, if it's, if the interest goes above the 300 above the 1500 so we could have multiple institutions for example i could go back on over here and say what if i add another one and this is bank number two bank number two is let's say 2000 of interest well that's getting significant and the irs is like we need more detail we need more detail so if i go to the forms now you've got schedule b being required it's populated in lacert by adding it in bold over here so now we got the more detail for bank number one, bank number two, the 300, the 2000, now adding up to the 2300, that tying out into the form 1040, pulling over all of its taxable because both of the of the 1099s we're imagining was in box number one. If I was going to pull that into my schedule over here, I would go to the schedule B and say we got another one for 2000, 3000 or 300 plus the two, 2000, pulling that over to the first page. We're at the uh, 1023 standard deduction, 12,550 still. There's the 87,750. 87,750 is down here. Wait a second. Hold on a second. It was the 89,750. And then the tax calculated. I just said it wrong, but I did it right. And so 15,567, 15,567, 15,567. So there we have that. 
So that those two scenarios. Now the other common box that you're going to be seeing uh, will often be an exempt. So it's it's tax exempt. So okay, we're going to go back on over in some way. It's going to be tax exempt. So if I go into my form over here, it might be it might be for example tax exempt interest box number eight. So then I'd say okay, well it's not going to be taxable. Let's delete it and just have just have tax exempt. I'm going to put it over here and let's say it's going to be tax exempt. Uh, total municipal bonds, let's say $1,000, $1,000. Going back on over to the forms then, we don't have the Schedule B because the IRS is saying, ah, that's small again. I'm not too worried about the added schedule. So it's over here. And then I've got it on 2A instead of 2B. So it's a reporting requirement of the 1000 $1, here, but it's not being included in my income down below. So notice it's not over here. So if I was to report this on my my other schedule, on my income, I might then I might make another column for basically tax exempt over here if I wanted to, and say it's it's going to be tax exempt, but it's not being included and pulled over in essence to page one, and adding it in on top of my W two income. It's not having that tax impact. So I'm back down to the one hundred thousand, the twelve five fifty, the twelve five fifty, bringing us down to the one eighty seven four fifty, the one eighty seven four fifty. The tax then being calculated depending on the software to do it at the uh, fifteen fifteen again. Back to the fifteen fifteen one five oh one five, and then of course we could have all of those things happening. So if I go back on over, I've got bank one. And then I've got another 300 over here. We might have multiple interests because we're like a savvy super investor and we've got, we've got interest coming from everywhere. Bank number three, and we'll say this was, this was the 2000. So now you've got some more stuff going on. It can get quite complex over here, but we can go back and also note interest could be pulled in from other skit, like a K1 or something like that could have stuff that's going to be pulled out for interest that you want to be careful of because it might be flowing through from another flow through entity like a partnership or an S corporation or something like that possibly. But in any case, we're going to go back on over back to the first page of the 1040. Now we've got the, the 2300 uh, on on 2B, but 1000 on 2A, 2A not being calculated or added up as we pull it down to the total. If I was to look at the Schedule B, now I've got this information returned for the 300 and uh, the 2000 up top. So let's go back on the 1040. If I was going to put that into my forms over here, I'd say, okay, Schedule B. Now I've got the 1000 exempt and then I have the 2000 and the 300. So the amount that we're actually including is going to be that 2300, not the 1000 that is exempt that's pulling over to the first page of the 1040 that we're actually going to be including and paying tax on the 102 300 standard deductions at the 12 550. And that gives us our taxable income at the 89 750. I could double check to the tax return. Is that right? 89,750 looks good. Tax calculated page two, depending on the tax return to do it. 155,567. 15,567. Is that what they said? I think it is. That's what I said. I said it and typed it correctly this time. I did both things correct. I said it right and I typed it right. So that's the general idea with the with the interest. So you just want to be aware that if you got the schedule B, be aware that basically the schedule B will not populate if the interest is below a certain threshold. Also be aware that some other flow through things could be flowing through. So if you're confused on you're off a little bit on the interest, you might say, well, was there a schedule K or something that came through that might be included? You could check it on the schedule B to see if if something like that is is going on. And then it's going to pull through and just be careful of noting that you've got this reporting requirement for the tax exempt stuff. And so what is a reporting requirement versus what's going to be added into the taxable income that's actually going to have the tax calculation on it. And then you can basically explain kind of that situation, hopefully to a client. This is tax exempt. That's what box eight means. Here's what box one is. It's a reporting requirement still, but it's exempt because the government gave you some kind of exemption because they want you to give them money and they're able to not charge uh, the taxes because they're the ones that charge taxes and, and they're, they, they're the ones that want the money so they're able to stop that. So in any case, that's the general idea.